Okay, so well, um, thanks everyone for joining. The topic of this uh, session is about providing a general overview of sales. What is sales? What are the common um, terminologies used in sales? What is a typical sales cycle? And what are the different functional areas or modules that are um, usually incorporated, implemented, utilized within sales automation, sales processes? What is sales? First thing, when we go into any organization, when we talk to any organization, what is sales? So we talk about how we sell things. We talk about how we talk to customers. We talk about how we how engage customers. So sales is actually a lot of things. It's not just going there with one sheet and giving them a okay price list. This is what it, to get to that yes, stage. Sir. There are so many steps you have to cover, right. and all of those come into sales. So first thing first, if we talk about very generic um, point of view from you can say a generic user or generic uh, workforce. Traditionally, we talk about sales as something that a person who is not very, uh, you can say, uh, technical, who is not looked after because he's probably uh, pushing you, always nagging you to buy their products. But that's actually not the case. In the enterprise sales process and in the new, you can say, uh, the current age, the sales is not really the traditional sales what it used to be 20, 30 years back. Even then, there was always a difference between a good sales practice and a bad sales practice. Nagging may get you some immediate business, but it will not give you long-term business. For long-term business, you have to drive solutions. You have to drive trust. You have to create relationships and maintain relationships. That's most important. And that relationship is not like your... Um, marrying somebody or you're becoming friends of somebody it's creating value out of it when you are working any salesperson is working with any customer potential or existing customer the whole viewpoint is what value can you provide to your customers that's most important if you go to your customer and customer gets the same value same service that he's or he or she is getting from 10 different other vendors why would they choose you there has to be some value proposition right there has to be something that you are doing other than or uh, different from what others are doing and that's what makes you stand different so that value is paramount at least in, in current age because there's a lot of competition as you already know and there are a lot of competing products services capabilities so you have to create your own edge and it can be as simple as uh, creating your edge on trust, your trustworthy person. When you say you commit something, you fulfill those commitments. Or it can be as complex as creating something really innovative product. Let's or extraordinary, you can say like. Right. Now, the second misconception about sales is that sales is an art. You cannot describe it. The star salesperson just does it they don't even know how they do it that's actually not the case even the star salesperson who would say they don't know but they do it they probably don't know the structure in which they do it they just do it out of their habit but there is always certain aspects of sales and this is where crm comes in to drive the sales in a better way towards closure right the idea is from the very moment wherein you start off first discussion with the customer, hello, Mr. X, thanks for giving us the opportunity to talk to you. We would like to understand about your requirements and we can look uh, work towards providing a better solution to your organization. From that, getting to the end, wherein Mr. X, thank you for giving us the opportunity to work with your team and signing off on the contract. And these are the next steps. That whole journey is sales. Right. And all the steps that you do to drive towards that first to the end state is what we capture in uh, different sales stages, different sales processes, uh, different best practices of sales as CRM, and, and drive those sales best practices to make sure that it's not just one person in your sales organization who is the expert on sales. It's 
a repeatable trainable process you can train your sales person to become those star sales person you can repeat those successes multiple times that is where crm comes in otherwise to be honest in the real world the star sales people who actually know the gist and who drive it may not be very much interested in crm because they are already driving the business they are already closing the business they don't need guidance the people who need guidance is one who are new to the business right who right have to have that kind of expertise experience or the organization because organization cannot depend on one two or few people for sustenance organization has to create a process a mechanism can be repeated and it is not dependent on anybody that is the most important thing right right what if the entire reliance reliance organization depends on two people for their sales what if those two people choose to leave reliance then reliance cannot afford to be closed because two people left the organization and that is the case for any organization it can be a small a small size organization it can be a medium size or a large size doesn't matter same logic applies the third misconception is sporadic it's ad hoc it comes when it comes it goes when it goes we can't really control it there is definitely some part of some area where you can't control but there are a lot of areas where you can control the outcome and this is again where the crms come into the picture wherein you can track those key attributes of your sales process or the learnings that you have gathered from sales process or the best practices or the win factors or the loss factors right you may be able to track why we are continuously losing business maybe a product when you whenever you try to sell this product 90% of times you're failing so something is wrong so if we start tracking those loss reasons why customers are not buying it that will give you insight around okay what's wrong with the product because end of the day you might build a very good car much better than tesla right it's right. in every sense it, it may be better than tesla it doesn't give you guarantee that people will start buying it and it can be any damn reason it can be the battery quality is good or it can be as simple as i like tesla's logo right it can be the, it can be that right so it's very essential you drive that process to track all those details and then you are able to take data driven decisions you're not going on hunch maybe the customers are not buying my product because it doesn't come in radial tires or maybe it doesn't come with um, auto shift gears no you have to drive with data if you have data if you're capturing why a person chose not to take your car and if you can say okay out of all the responses we have received 60% people said they didn't like the um, look of the car so now it's data driven insights and you can drive that back to improve your product or sales process right so mm-hmm. that data driven aspect is huge and that's where these systems not just crm any any business system shines because you can track all those attributes and then you can build more insights based on those attributes okay so moving on i will not spend too much time on this uh, again you guys will have access to this uh, presentation and the video uh, these are different terminologies that are used in sales the key things that i would like to highlight is what is a lead and a prospect a lead or a prospect is somebody whom you do not know you don't have any relationship with that person or an organization and you have just got initial information very initial potential interest that this person or organization may be interested may be interested in buying your product it's a may big may they may not be let's say they visited your website or they attended your conference uh, session or they uh, sent an email to your um, email address or submitted a online web submission to send an inquiry it can be any different format or maybe social um, media they submitted a request through facebook or twitter so it's a potential 
you don't even know whether they are the right client whom you are targeting right maybe you have an enterprise solution you can't really sell it to small scale companies so in it's a very small company it's 10 people company so it's not even applicable your product is not applicable so you don't know that all you have is maybe the organization name email address phone name and you want to continue from there so that's your prospect now what um, what's your deal and opportunity when this lead is converted when when you have vetted it out completely and this is something we'll cover in the next slides on the process part but when you have done initial level of investigation and vetting out that yes this person is something that is really interested is someone who is really interested in our product and there are higher chances they will buy our product okay next is sales forecasting the big thing in sales from an organization perspective is to be able to one project how much sales they will be making or they should be making in a given financial year and then allocating resources to make that win because remember guys when uh, the sales team starts and usually they start couple of months before the financial year so let's say if the financial year of the organization starts from january and ends at december they will start doing financial planning for 2021 from august 2020 or september 2020 and the idea is that they are bringing in their sales people their sales managers their account managers directors everyone is coming up with their projection of this is what we will be doing business next year and it has to obviously uh, align with the business uh, the organization's goal as well different organizations based on different factors will have their own way of deriving these numbers but the idea is that let's say if the organization the enterprise says okay this year we earned 4 million dollars and next year our target is 6 million dollars now this team is where they will try to uh, factor in if they can even achieve 6 million dollars because in that case collectively every team has to come up with a 6 million dollar plan broken down plan some team will have a target of 1 million some other team will have target of 2 million whatever that is ratio is but collectively they have to fulfill that 6 million target by fulfilling they mean they have to project it that okay i can get like say 400k from this customer or 200k from new business and all that stuff that is the forecast for 2021 financially 2021 and that is what they put in into the system as sales forecasting okay and they start projecting on it or working towards it and it can be uh, it define at the financial year but then it's also bifurcated within the periods financial quarters months so you are having more frequent checks on where your forecast is and where you are heading towards right if you are continuously underperforming for 11 months in your financial year there is no way you can attain your target you are already running behind your target right so that's where it helps in tracking and making sure that you you will hit your target sales pipeline and funnel is basically a continuous work in progress continuous state of your opportunities all the opportunities that you own be or your team members own and how they are driving it towards starting from the starting stage whatever that stage is of your opportunity towards the ending stage and the ending stage is usually standard closed one or closed lost right quota target goals quota is basically a target or goal it's pretty much the same or similar terminologies from a financial standpoint the this is the target that individual users get based on their forecast based on the organization's forecast they will allocate those quotas that okay you your budget or your uh, target is 500k somebody else's target is 1 million dollars so it's basically being broken down from top to bottom the organization is 6 uh, million dollars the next layer it will be let's say 2 million dollar each the next layer it will be let's say 1 million dollar each the next layer it might be uh, 200k each so it's broken down to the bottom level to bring that business the rest of them are i think pretty uh, straightforward and you can read about it the 
another thing that i want to highlight is customer acquisition cost it's something that is very very important um from a business standpoint because it's there is a um, you need to understand there are um, there are lots and lots of people in the world so it takes lot of time to drive them towards that initial handshake towards closing closing a business as we discussed as i just mentioned it there goes a lot into selling something building the trust creating the solution bringing a repo building a relationship and and then you can sell something then they can buy something from you okay it's a very organic uh, selling process so it requires a lot of effort it requires a lot of time and that means effort and time essentially that means that is a lot of cost so the all the efforts time money that is spent in bringing business bringing a new customer is called cost of acquisition cost of acquiring a new customer okay and every organization what they want is they want to get more customers but of course they don't want to spend a lot of money so let's say if i am spending 10 dollars to acquire one customer now for 10 customers it's 100 dollars for 100 customers it will be 1000 dollars so my uh, cost of acquisition is kind of becoming incremental right and it's definitely not 10 dollars it's usually very high so you your business will not be able to grow if your cost of acquisition keeps on increasing or keeps steady you have to keep it uh, keep it down in fact bring it down continuously one of the ways to do that and is another term is that you upsell you sell more services to the customer you already have a relationship so you start selling more more services more products to the same customer okay in that case you already know the customer you already have a reputation you already have a relationship so you don't have to um, do all that of st- stuff again you already you can say 80% through the funnel through the stages it's just remaining 20% that you have to do right let's say for our example if a customer is already uh, uh, taking salesforce services from us and if they have a requirement of let's say microsoft.net development for us acquiring that business will be bit easier because they are already our customers so we'll not have to build the relationship we don't even need to reach out they probably will reach out to us and then we can try to get that closed right so that's called upselling moving on the top key sales models uh, when we talk about how different organizations sell and that's the way or the construct of how the companies are set up uh, primarily b2b where the business the organization is selling to a business b2c where the organization is selling directly to customers and b2b to c they're selling to both businesses and customers and as you can see the examples can be steel manufacturers you don't directly deal with steel manufacturers right those companies uh, like sale and all they are just selling it to further to different companies and then you buy from those in product makers but you don't directly buy steel from sale b2c uh, retail stores you go to um, dmart or go to reliance mart and they are directly buying from them those are direct b2c um, clients or b2b businesses b2b to c companies like reliance telecom airtel they're selling to businesses as well as they're selling to customers so pretty much in that sales in fact should be sales team structure this is a very simple example and it's just to bring some awareness around how different organizations structure their um, sales teams and it is again just for a sample sake the structure can be very different and usually is different and customized based on different organizations but the idea is that at the very top you have somebody a sales president or chief sales officer or something like that uh, who is responsible for the entire sales of the organization then under that you have you can say segmentations from top to bottom the segmentation can be based on region as given in the example let's say central north east you may have sales regions 
then broken down by further uh, bifurcations within the region. It can be northwest, northeast, and then further broken down. Let's say from India perspective, we can start off, let's say, in fact, there can be a global global sales uh, um, officer, and then there can be an Asia uh, sales officer, there can be an India sales officer, then within India, there can be uh, east, west, north, south, central, and then uh, there can be a regional uh, person within, let's say, uh, Uttarakhand, somebody else is uh, the sales manager for that region. So it's, it works in that format. You break it down to the bottom level, so you can have your workforce working at the local level, but then everyone is aggregating those numbers, those targets, those performances to the topmost level. And this is what you would see. Again, uh, just want to bring some flavor from Salesforce standpoint. This is typically what you would see in your role structures. This is what you would build in your role structure so that your sales person who's working in Dehradun, when he creates an opportunity, that opportunity is visible to your India sales head, and they can see how many opportunities are there in India. Um, and then that counts against their performance or their sales funnel. Now, this is a very typical sales life cycle, starting from lead management towards opportunity management, and then bringing towards closure. The idea is that you start off from lead capturing, where you're capturing the leads from different lead channels. Those lead channels can be, as we said, conferences, emails, social web submissions, any any uh, place where a customer can reach out to you. It can be a phone as well, uh, when, where the customer can reach out to you and show some interest to buy your product or service. Or might be just say that I'm interested. What can you sir, do? Sir, I can see only the third um, slide that is sales terminology or jargon. Uh, I don't know where, whether the others are, uh, can see the slide. The I other sales slide. Yeah, I can see only the sales terminology. I, mean, I don't know what. What slide uh, you guys are seeing? Sir, I, I can see, um, I mean, sales terminology. Okay. What about the rest? Uh, sales life cycle, sir. Yeah, okay. So you guys, you may need to just refresh the screen, maybe. So I'll I'll, I'll move on. Um, from a functional architecture standpoint, these are a couple of uh, again uh, standard modules that you would incorporate within um, a sales process of sales implementation. Starting off, of course, from lead management, then account management, contact management, opportunity management, quote management reporting or analytics, sales playbook, and then some few others. So I'll quickly jump onto it. Lead management, capturing your leads, scoring your leads, very important lead scoring. As leads come in, uh, and it can come in thousands and, and more, right? Uh, uh, just imagine how many lead forms uh, Tesla's uh, web, uh, website would start capturing. A lot of interest getting in, a lot of people interested, a lot of people want to know what is this about and how good the car is. Or maybe um, even let's say Samsung phone, Apple phone, right? How many inquiries they would be getting. But they can't look at all the inquiries. It's not even productive to look at all the inquiries. So that's where lead scoring comes in very handy, wherein you would make the system intelligent to automatically score the leads based on various parameters. It can be um, the information that is available. Let's say the lead has email address or phone number. That means they have better contact information, so definitely higher. If the lead just have a name, it's of no use. Who would you reach out if it just has a name or a completely useless email ID, a vague email ID, right? Or it can be as comprehensive as how many times he have visited, the person has visited our website, how many email uh, campaigns that we have sent, how many emails have this customer opened, how many forms this customer has submitted. That will increase the score that makes it worth it and brings it at the top of the list to be reviewed and um, progressed in the next set of stages. Research, 
um more or less actually it, it is something that may or may not be applicable to certain organizations research are really required where it's a very uh, sales intensive organization and they want to capture more insights about the customers or potential potential leads to be able to um, vet out if they are viable and if they need to be continued or they should be better left off they it's not viable and you want to just leave them not work towards them and if they are really worth it but they may not be really ready to buy this or maybe let's say uh, just taking an example let's say uh, uh, samsung is launching its new phone samsung galaxy s15 or or like one uh, what is that red plus and others whatever those brands are one plus one not one so plus. what what they do is and that they too follow this marketing methodology right they would launch start launching news about it photos about it different uh, blogs about it about the new product six months before the product is launched and then they start registering those early inquiries that's what this is used for right that's lead for capture form who all are interested just submit uh do advance booking and all that and with that they are getting to know who are interested how many people we have gathered so we can accordingly do manufacturing and they keep on sending emails to them that's the nurturing part of it you keep it warm just because you have said that i'm interested in samsung galaxy s15 doesn't mean that you probably will buy it after 6 months you might even forget it so they keep sending you emails after every two weeks or one month to make sure that you are constantly reminded that there is a new phone coming in and you are probably interested you are interested you don't know but you are interested you will buy it so it's nurturing it's constantly pushing yourself in that focus area so they do not forget you account management now this is something that is very very important wherein uh, there are uh, regular sales especially like our business we are into consulting so for us it's not like one time sell we are not selling cars after you sell a car to somebody you probably don't even know that person for next 15 20 years or even let's say um, a refrigerator you might not connect with that person for next 10 years they should not need your uh, new refrigerator after 10 years um but in our case it's a high touch business right we have to be in constant touch with the accounts so account management becomes very uh, important for those kind of organizations which have those regular touches the first thing is definitely maintaining different accounts an account can be any different business entity it can be customer vendor competitor partner and you're tracking all those activities uh, or or attributes that you want to capture for each of these business entities uh managing the life cycle um for example when we onboard our customers the first thing we do is create their contract second thing we do is set up their uh, account in our project management portal so they can access their projects so it's a customer onboarding process it can be as simple as like what we do very comprehensive as different industries do um wholesale industries wholesale industries will do a credit check on the customer because wholesale when the customer buys from wholesale companies they don't give money up front they give money afterwards like you, i'm not sure how many of you might be aware all the bookshops when you go to buy books on bookshops those bookshop sellers don't pay money up front to publishers they take the books they probably might make a give some uh, initial payment but then the rest of the payment is done afterwards after a couple of months and in in steps in installments in fact okay and they might return some of the books they were not able to sell so that's the nuance so that's a constant again based on different dynamics you have you may have separate processes for um, um onboarding the customer maintaining the customer you may have regular like banks have kycs so that's an account maintenance process they have to constantly make sure that they're getting the information and if uh, i think one or two year cycle they'll have to renew the kyc for that customer 
right? The third most important, uh, third important thing is uh, tracking the life cycle. How the account was acquired, how the account maintenance is happening, what are the interactions that are happening, different events, they bought additional products, they have lodged five claim, uh, claims, they have lodged five complaints, they have sent five emails, all of the things you have to track and uh, um, make sure that you're having all that data tracked and compared in one place. And that's where CRM comes in to collate all that data interactions and all. And last and for, uh, but not the least is the insights. You're tracking that important insight into how you're doing for the customer, how much value the customer is bringing to your organization. What can you sell further to the customer? Let's say you go to um, Amazon's website and Amazon knows, okay, last time you bought um, um, a cricketing bat from us. So you probably will also be interested in the ball that goes with it or gloves that goes with it. Because I know you've bought the bat. You probably will buy the things that goes along with it. Right? So that's upselling. So that's maintaining those important insights of the customer so that we can improve our sales uh, processes and we can do better sales. Contact management, again, um, very important, wherein you're able to um, maintain that personal relationship with the customer. It can be just tracking basic personal details of the customer, uh, phone number, email, address, uh, mobile number and all. Uh, tracking the communications, the emails you have sent, SMS you have sent, um, Facebook posts or Twitter tweets that you have sent or the customer has sent so that you have a better understanding of where they are. Let's say you're going to um, the customer and um, today you're supposed to basically pitch a solution which is um, for SQL Server, right? And then you see that the person whom you're going to speak to has sent a Facebook post saying SQL Server is the most pathetic database in the world. Now, what do you do? At least you are now aware that somebody, they have posted something that probably will not go well when you are in that discussion. So you're equipping your salespeople with the information, whatever information that can be provided to them so they can be really intelligent when they are facing their customers or potential. Mapping the relationship, very essential, again, depending on how high or how frequent the touch is with the customer. For organization like us, for consulting or other organization like banks, healthcare, um, others, it's very important to understand whom you're dealing with. If an organization, let's say you're a salesperson, you go to another organization, the client organization, and you're dealing with 15 different people, right? One person may be from purchasing department. Their, their goal is just to get somebody's confirmation and give you the contract or give somebody the contract. There might be some somebody from IT department. Their goal is just to review what you're doing and provide confirmation that technically what you're saying is right and is the, excuse me is the right solution. Then third person will be from the business side who is actually going to use the solution. So they will be there to confirm, okay, yes, the solution that you're giving will give me some value because I'll be going to use using it. So if it is not good, it, it is complex, I'll raise it. And then there will be somebody from business higher up leadership who will ask all these three people, are you good? Because he's the person who's going to sign off on it. And that's what you want to maintain and manage the relationship. You want to know who those people are, who's the decision maker, who's the catalyst, who's going to reject your deal, who's going to approve or support your deal. So those kind of relationships and what is their relationship among, among themselves, who reports to whom. If a manager says, I don't like it, their subordinate are more likely to say they don't like it themselves. So those relationships becomes very important when we go to account uh, contact management perspective. And then third is tracking any personal details uh, that you want to probably keep track of. Um, any notes, preferences, you probably know that Mr. Smith 
likes to play golf so yeah. that's good for you to know in case you are also interested you can connect with mr smith and build some healthy relationships sir can you uh, i mean uh, let us know more about the stakeholders i know but i mean not that much i mean i heard this term terminology from you um, a couple of i mean lots of times so i want to more about the stakeholders what does it mean and stakeholders is probably we can catch it up later stakeholders comes in uh, more in terms of project management okay okay um opportunity management um opportunity management is basically the core crux of your sales process uh, you can pretty much leave everything out that we have discussed this is what is the bare bone structure of a sales process starting from that early uh, the very early stage we are doing the handshake hi mr smith nice to meet you for the first time and then the end stage where in thanks mr smith thanks for approving and signing the contract and looking forward to work, working with you that's the sales process and that is what you track in opportunity so tracking the opportunity or sales opportunities from start to end uh following up the process whatever different processes uh, your organizations have set and uh, criteria the organization have set to um, conclude or progress your uh, opportunities uh keeping track of different sales activities you may be required to uh, sign an nda for a specific type of client if the client is let's say um uh, organize uh, business or government organization then as per your organization sales process you may be needed to sign a contract with them so that's a prerequisite so system can help you remind that you have to get the nda signed off if you do not i'll not let you progress your opportunity so that's keeping track of the sales activities and making sure the people are following the process and the last is of course providing updates to the uh, to the uh, upper management a sales person to sales manager a sales executive to sales manager sales manager to sales director sales director to vp and so on and so forth the idea is that every week or whatever that duration is a sales person can collect this data and then share it with the uh, higher management and it can be done actively and passively actively means they are probably generating a report in excel or pdf format and submitting it formally or passively where they are just populating the opportunity they are sending the email they are closing the task and then system automatically generates a report for them it's giving the insights to the leadership um there are no open tasks associated with this sales person or there are five pending tasks overdue tasks assigned to this sales person they have not completed it that means they are not following the compliance or they are not compliant to the process system can drive those insights quotation management this is a, a small sip segue from the opportunity management within the organizations wherein you need formal quotations you can generate quotations from the system itself uh, the idea is that the sales person as probably they are dealing with a lot of different potential clients you don't want them to spend too many hours too much time to generate quotations you want to give them tools to create those quotations really fast that's where crms come in or in fact you might have heard of tools specialized tools like cpq or cpg comes in wherein um, q2c and cpq configure pro product quote and quote to cash those are the two terminologies used in that domain the idea is that you are able to generate the quotation faster and the reason the quotations take time sometimes in different industries is that their product structure is very complex their pricing is very complex and it's very hard for people to track what can i sell to this customer at what rate should i sell to this customer can i sell it to this customer is it legal to sell it in this state this product right marijuana is legal in california but not legal in some other states you can't just sell it so there are so many things would goes into there right your sales person can't be expected to remember everything that's where again tool comes in wherein tool can make you intelligent make your sales person intelligent by not trying to remember all these things okay um so very very important from that aspect uh sharing the quotations probably you want to share it digitally 
in the current stage that's all the more important there is no way you can expect the person to physically sign it uh, why would you want it you can't even see the person face to face these days so better off send it digitally get it digitally signed and then you're remo- removing all the hops approving the uh, signing the uh, quotation um and moving on with the next sales process probably customer is one and now you're starting with customer onboarding reporting and analytics um often this is overlooked when we talk about sales implementations but very very essential because remember the money is coming from higher management the money is coming from enterprise and they are not giving you money to add some bells and whistles to their sales processes they are giving you money to drive the sales to get the benefit right that top line bottom line they want to increase their top line they want to increase their bottom how do they do that they have to monitor it right they want to see how much how much business were we making year over year how much business is this sales person bringing how much business this sales person brought two years back they brought 1 million and they still bought, brought 1 million this year that means there is no increase they have they have to increase the quota quota every time if your sales target last year was 1 million this year it will be 2 million next year it will be 2.5 million next year it will be 3.5 million you have to bring it that's it trend over trend reporting dashboards to get those quick analytics the idea is constant regular complete track of how the sales is doing and identify the areas which are not performing the people who are not performing the products who are not performing and then improving those areas those people those products to make sure that they can come back into their selling cycle they can be sold more sales playbook this is i would say something that is a newer concept in in the tool at least of course this has been the magic book of the uh, superstars of sales they have their own ways of selling it and they crafted their ways by learning by experience and this is where sales playbook comes in wherein those um best practices can be structured in sales playbooks wherein you can define what should a sales person do in a specific situation or for a specific sales process and it can be uh, i think again as i mentioned this was copy pasted some of the things remain as is but the idea is that let's say if you are working with an enterprise customer and that customer that person whom you are talking to, uh, with that person goes on a medical leave for 3 months what do you do how do you deal with it you you are probably just having 2 years of experience in sales you don't know how to handle these situations so probably you'll reach out to somebody who has 15 20 30 years of sales experience so they can guide you how to deal with the situation but in this case a sales playbook can come in and you can just quickly refer okay if a person leaves these are the five things you should be doing so you should reach out who is the next person who will be replacing this person for the interim duration set up a meeting with them share with them the current updates the progress you have made the information you have shared and set the expectation for the next steps again this is sales playbook it's equipping your sales people to be ready for any unforeseen situations foreseen or unforeseen situations and bringing that common enterprise selling process in the in the in in life okay and these are some other concepts or uh, terms i just thought it probably would be helpful for you like sales commission of course this doesn't need explanation every sales person in a most of the enterprises would earn a commission on the sales they make that's their driving factor so a lot of it goes into how that sales commission is calculated how that is applied how that is communicated how that is shared or um actually attributed 360 degree view of the customer uh, f- since past couple of years it has become paramount that the sales person as i was saying uh, you're going to sell um, microsoft sql server to a customer and they have posted on uh, facebook that sql server is the 
worst product out there. So you have to have that 360 degree view of there, right? Or maybe you're, <clears throat> you're already selling a printer to an organization and you're trying to now sell more printers to the organization. And then you realize that those, that same customer organization, they have launched uh, 10,000 uh, escalations or issues with the pr printers in last year. That means they're already not in a very right shape. So you want to first improve the relationship and then try to upsell more printers, right? Or sales coaching. Uh, this is where I was saying that once you start tracking and doing analytics on how it's going and all that, then the sales leaders and sales managers can identify people and products who are not performing well, De deals and opportunities who are not performing well, and then get back get them back into green zone. Green zone means they're going in the right direction. So that pretty much completes my slides. Any questions for anyone? I, I'm, I know I've walked and went really fast, but I think uh, we only had 30, 60 minutes, so I had to be really fast on that.